Hello everybody. So today we are trying to see how we can construct an activity on node network. The first thing that we need to have, of course, is the project itself. Uh, and we need to know which are the activities that the project has and, of course, which are the dependencies. Which, in other words, is which activity needs to go first and which activity needs to go second and so on. So this project is a very small exemplary case uh, with, very with few activities. Um, and let's see how we're going to put it on an activity or node network. So the first thing that you need to do, never forget that all the projects start with a milestone, which is the milestone of start, and finish with another milestone, which is the milestone of finishing. Um, you won't find usually these milestones on such tables, but keep in mind uh, and put it on your network. So the first thing that one would do would be to represent the starting node. So the ST is for start. That's the first thing that you, uh, that you need to do. Um, I have to remind you that there are different representations of nodes. So you might see squares, rectangles, circles, triangles, whatever you can imagine. But that's not a problem. The only thing that you need to do is to have a legend denoting what you have in the node. So this is our legend and it tells us that the ID of the activities is going to be used as the basic information in the node. Okay, what's next? As you will see in the algorithm of how to construct an activity on node network, the first thing that you need to do is to place on the network any activities that do not have any predecessors. And in this case, that would be A. In the table, we see the ID of the activities, the activities themselves, the names, and here you see the predecessors. So activity A doesn't have any predecessor and it can be put into the network. There you go. That's activity A. Now, after you put all the activities that have no predecessors, you have to pick the algorithm says at random, but I bet that you're going to be cleverer than that. And you're going to be the, pick the next activity and make sure that all the predecessors of the activities uh, that you're going to pick have already been placed in the network. That would be the case for activity B and activity C, because both of them have as a single predecessor activity A. So there you go. That's activity B. That's activity C. As soon as you put the activities on the network, do not forget to create the links, which shows uh, which show the dependency. Um, the next one is activity D. And as you see, activity D comes after activities B and C. So I can place activity D here. And I have two links that come from activity B and activity C. Next one, activity E. Activity E has a single predecessor, activity C. I check, it's already on the uh, network, so I can place activity E as well. There you go. Don't worry about where you're going to put exactly the node on the network. That's not, not, not a big worry. You can, you can go uh, uh, further down, further up, uh, left, uh, left or right, wherever you have space. Uh, although it would be nice to follow the sequence of execution. However, don't forget that this is what we call a directed graph. A directed graph is a graph that is not, uh, uh, the nodes are not connected by just lines, but arrows which show how we move. So you know when you see the arrow that you go from C to E. C is the predecessor, E is the successor activity. The next activity would be activity F, and F comes after D and E. So there you go, that's F. And before uh, you say that I'm done, don't forget the milestone of the end of the project. So finishing milestone, there you go. Have another one that's finishing. You don't see it on the table because it's not really an activity, just, just a milestone. And there you go. That's the um, activity or node network for this specific problem. 